Okay, welcome back once again. Hopefully you've already seen our part one report on the adventure models at EICMA from last week's show that sort of covered the new major model announcements at the expo. However, there were a good few more adventure models at the show and some of them are headliners themselves. And some are smaller and at first glance nowhere near as glamorous as the big boys, but in reality, would probably have a much more significant impact in Southern Africa thanks to their relative affordability. Before we get to those, let us first get back to the headline stuff. And there was one model that is undoubtedly headline material, even though it was still wearing its testing camouflage. The new Tiger 1200, due to be launched any moment now, was on display on the Triumph stand. The adventure segment is these days where all the major manufacturers go head to head and strut their stuff, much like they used to in the superbike class when I were a lad. Obviously, there are differences in approach. For instance, you know that KTM will always go for the hardcore performance above all else end of the spectrum, while Honda will be the polar opposite of that with something that foregoes outright power and performance stats in favor of a sensible, reliable, and yet still incredibly capable bike. Just a lot less shouty than the orange tools. In between these two points lie the rest of the manufacturers, some veering more towards a road bias machine, others trying to achieve the perfect balance between the two environments. Triumph tries to get near to that perfect balance, especially with its middleweight bikes, but Triumph's 1200 Explorer has until now tended to be perceived as a touch more of a road tourer, even though in the right hands it was still pretty capable off-road. Well, looking at this new Tiger 1200, I have to say that I think the bias may have shifted somewhat more towards the dirty end of the spectrum now, with the Brit manufacturer taking solid aim at BMW's GS success phenomenon. Obviously, we won't know for sure until we ride the new bike, but just from seeing it on its stand, it has the air of a more athletic motorcycle. Triumph has already said it's going to be lighter, more agile, and much more of a weapon in the dirt, and having seen it, I can totally believe the marketing hype. The most noticeable detail when I saw the bike was the rear end shaft drive and swing arm treatment that seems to have some kind of, I don't know, some parallelogram vibe going on. The bike will obviously use the same new triple engine found in the Speed Triple, though I would imagine without that bike's 180 horsepower, hopefully it won't have been emasculated too much, especially considering Harley's all new Pan America makes 150 horsepower. So I'd expect to see somewhere between that and 160 horsepower when details are finally released. I think the first version will be a Rally Pro, the most serious off-road version, after which there will probably be a more road-oriented alternative for those who want the roomy nature of an adventure bike without wanting to take it off-road too much. If Ducati can do a Pike's Peak option of its Multistrada V4, then perhaps Triumph might do the same thing with its own flagship adventure bike and bung in some 17 inch rims and answer the call of what I would have thought is a fairly sizable segment of the market. Okay, enough of this prototype nonsense, we'll know more soon enough. So let's cross over to the CF Moto stand where the long awaited Chinese KTM was on display. We've known for a good while now the MT800 was on its way, so it was good to finally see it in the flesh. And as most of you will know, this model comes about thanks to a partnership between CF Moto and KTM that has been going on in one form or another for nearly a decade now. KTM's middleweight bikes are made by the Chinese manufacturer, the small bikes in cooperation with the Indian brand Bajaj, and now we're seeing a further development of the Chinese partnership with CF Moto using the 799cc parallel twin engine from the KTM middleweights when they were 790s. Obviously, they've now moved on to the 890 designation, leaving CF Moto free to use the smaller engine without directly stepping on any orange toes. 94 horsepower and 77 newton meters of torque are not to be sniffed at, and neither is the chassis, which is, very unsurprisingly, given the KTM link, a steel trellis affair. If there was one place where the MT800 might have suffered in comparison to its virtual Austrian twin, it's the electronics, but it does appear to be fully loaded in that respect as well. Riding modes, keyless ignition, cruise control, seven inch TFT screen, Bluetooth, sat nav on the screen, heated grips and a heated seat. The list is impressive and, and really puts it on a par with the European competition. 
The pricing remains to be revealed and given all the electronic goodies, it surely can't be too much cheaper than its European opposition. If that's the case, they might have a problem selling them when a prospective buyer in South Africa has to weigh up the cost savings against the already known quantities of the established brands and their extensive and tested dealer networks. That may have been the center of attention for CF Moto, but the Chinese company also had an updated 650 MT on display that retails for about 120,000 Rand, including the panniers. It has two riding modes, an LCD screen, 60 horsepower, and overall is a lot of bike for the money. Let's move on to another Chinese manufacturer whose smaller bikes we have already seen in SA, and they have two adventure models that could go down very well indeed on this continent. The most recent addition to the Vogue lineup is the new DSX 650 that, interestingly, hasn't followed the crowd with the usual parallel twin, but has opted for a single cylinder engine. This big thumper has an internal balancer shaft, so it shouldn't be too vibey, in theory, and it pumps out a reasonable 47 horsepower. There's a steel trellis frame, Nissin brakes, and a 19 inch front and 17 inch rear wheel with Pirelli rubber. There's a center stand, crash bars, and aluminium panniers, and a TFT screen with Bluetooth connectivity. Euro prices suggest it could be sold in South Africa a few grand short of the 150,000 Rand mark. Vogue also has a 500cc adventure model with a parallel twin motor that makes similar power to the 650 single. Suspension is from KYB, brakes are from Nissin, tyres are Pirelli's on 19 and 17 inch rims again, and there's a TFT screen, again with connectivity. There's even remote tyre pressure monitoring, which is quite something on a bike that would probably retail for a little bit under 110,000 Rand. I know, amazing. Vogue also had a rally version of their 300cc adventure model on show, and very pretty it is too. Again, you'd have to say there would surely be a market for something like this in adventure bike mad South Africa. Build quality should be pretty good on their models as well, considering Vogue's parent company is Lonsin, a big manufacturer that already makes engines for the likes of BMW. And that's it for Adventure Bikes from Eichmer. We've run out of time, and if I missed anything, you'll just have to forgive the Bike Show camera crew, which was me. There was a lot to get through in just the one press day. Check in with us again next week when I'll be bringing you some more new models, and there's plenty of them. We've barely scratched the surface yet. And Don will be riding a second-hand touring Honda that should probably be inducted into Motorcycling's Touring Hall of Fame. We'll see you then.